Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, I'd like to walk through how to set up a Python development environment in Sublime Text. Now, I get a lot of requests to uh, show how I have my development environment set up, and also what packages I have installed, and what settings I use, and also how I run Python from within Sublime Text. Now, I've actually done a basic walkthrough of setting up Sublime Text in a previous video, but that's actually more geared towards web development back when my full-time job was doing front-end JavaScript work. Now, that video is also pretty old now, and there are a few things that are now done differently. So I'm just going to completely uninstall Sublime Text and walk through the entire process from scratch. And this time instead focusing on setting up an environment for Python development. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so I've already completely uh, deleted Sublime Text from my machine, and now I'm over here at the Sublime Text 3 download page. Um, now the first thing usually uh, people ask me about Sublime Text is whether or not it is free. And you can see here on their download page uh, that Sublime Text may be downloaded and evaluated for free. Uh, however, a license must be purchased for continued use. And there's currently no enforced time limit for the evaluation. So basically what that means is that Sublime Text is free to download and use for an unlimited amount of time. Uh, but if you don't purchase a license, then you'll occasionally get a notice asking you to make a purchase. Um, so I've personally bought a license, but it's not 100% necessary. Um, so you don't need one to do this walkthrough, uh, to walk through this video, or to use Sublime Text for as long as you want. Okay, so let's go ahead and download Sublime Text. So I'm going to download this for my operating system, and I'm on a Mac. But if you're on Windows or Linux, then you'll want to install the version for your system. Okay, so now that is finished downloading, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, open this and on a Mac I just have to drag this into my applications folder but on another operating system uh, you might have to walk through a quick installation. Okay so now let's go ahead and open up that fresh installation of Sublime Text. Now I have a sample Python uh, module here that I'm going to use just so we have something to run within Sublime. Um, so let me go ahead and drag this over real quick. Okay, and now I'll just go ahead and maximize this here and open up this test module. So this is a sample class that I use for my object-oriented series. Now, if you don't know what this code is doing, then don't worry about it. I just wanted something that we can run within Sublime and also something with classes and functions so that we can see the difference between the different color schemes. Um, so let me go ahead and make this big enough so that everyone can see here. Okay, so at this point, you can uh, run Python programs using the automatic build system. So if I wanted to run this code, then I could just come up here to Tools, and if I wanted to see the build systems, then I could just hover over that. And you can see that it's set to automatic. Now, I don't really use the automatic build system anymore, uh, but we'll get to that later. Now, if you wanted to try to run this Python code, then you could just come down here to Build. And if you're on a Mac, then you can see that the uh, shortcut for that is Command-B. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Now with this automatic build system, mine has some weird characters here at the top, and that's because it has a conflict with one of my dot files. Uh, you can just ignore that because you're probably not gonna have anything like that, uh, but it does run the code from our file here at the bottom. Um, and like I said, yours will most likely just run the print statements without all that other junk at the top, uh, but I'll talk more about build systems towards the end of this video. Okay, so this is just a basic fresh installation of Sublime Text where we can run some simple code. Uh, so let's go ahead and customize this a bit and add some extra functionality. So I'll show you how I set this up and how you're used to seeing this in my videos. So first of all, we're gonna to wanna to install package control. Now it used to be that you had to do this manually and copy and paste a long command into your Sublime Text terminal. Uh, but after one of the updates, I'm not sure which one, uh, but they added the ability to do this directly through Sublime Text. And I'm sure that they did this because package control is so popular and they wanted to make this as easy as possible. Um, so package control allows us to install third party packages uh, that add functionality to Sublime Text. So we can up open our command palette by going to tools and then clicking here on command palette. And the shortcut on the Mac you can see here is command shift P. And I'll probably use that shortcut for the rest of this video. Now, once we have that command palette open, then let's just type in install. And you can see that the top option here is install package control. So let's go ahead and click on that. And if we wait for just a second there, then it should uh, pop up with this um, package control was successfully installed pop-up once that is finished. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. 
Okay, so after you get that notification, we should be able to install packages. So let's open up that same command palette as before. Um, so on Mac, that was Command Shift P. And now let's just type install. And you can see that the first option here is install package. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. So the first packages that I'm going to want to install are my themes and color schemes that I use. Now, if you explore around different packages, then you might notice color schemes and themes. The difference between a color scheme and a theme is that the color schemes change the color of your syntax and things like that. And the theme changes the entire look and interface of Sublime Text. So if you like this interface, but just want to change the color of your code, then you could try different color schemes. But I've been using the same theme and color scheme for some time now and I really like that. And you can look around at different ones to see what you like, but a color scheme that I like is called Predon, and the theme that I like is called Material. So I'm gonna go ahead and install both of those. So to install Predon, I'm just gonna type in Predon here, and you'll see that that pops up as the first option. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that to install it. And if you look in the bottom left, you can see that it says that it's installing Predon. So most of these packages install pretty quickly. Um, now, after you install a package, then some of them pop up with these readme files, giving you uh, more information. So you can see here that this theme uh, popped up a readme and gives us some activation instructions and additional recommended settings and things like that. Now, I'm only going to be using the pre-dawn color scheme and not the entire theme. So to install the theme, then I'm going to open up my command palette again and install another package, and this is called Material Theme. So if I just type in Material, it doesn't pop up all the way, but Material uh, Theme is the one that we want. And now that's the top one here, so I'm going to go ahead and install that. Okay, so that Material Theme has finished installing, and it usually pops up a, another readme file just like the pre-dawn readme, but for some reason it didn't this time. Uh, but that's okay because I'm going to show you all the settings that I personally use, and I've kind of mixed and matched the recommended settings for both of these packages, and also have some additional settings that I personally like to have set as well. And I have these available on my GitHub page, and I'll put a link to this in the description section below. A lot of people have been asking me to put more things up on my personal GitHub page lately, so I'm going to try to start putting everything up there. So if I pull up my GitHub page here, I've already got it pulled up here within Chrome. And uh, so my Sublime Text settings are a little buried down here in my dot .files init folder. Um, but like I said, I'll have a link to this page directly in the description section. So the first settings that I'm going to change here are my general Sublime Text settings. And these are located within this preferences.sublime settings uh, file here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'll go over these in a minute, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and copy all of these and place these into Sublime. So I'm going to copy those. And now within Sublime Text, I'm going to click up here on Sublime and then Preferences and then Settings. Now, that's how you get there on a Mac. I believe on Windows, those preferences might be under the uh, file, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, now, when I open up the Sublime settings, it opens up two different files here, and this confuses some people. Uh, so on the left, we have our default settings, and on the right, we have our user settings. Now, you only want to make changes to the user settings because the default settings can get overwritten when we do updates and things like that. So within my user settings over here on the right, I'm going to go ahead and erase everything and then just paste in what I copied over from my GitHub page. Okay, so now when I save these settings, then you're gonna see the theme change the entire interface. So if I save that, then you can see that that entire interface uh, looks different now. Now, usually after I make a lot of changes to any settings, uh, I usually like to restart Sublime Text just to make sure that all those changes take effect. So let's go ahead and quit out of Sublime Text and then open this back up. And we may need to quit out of these settings and reopen those uh, when we open Sublime Text back up too. Okay, so now let's go over some of these settings that I set. And like I said, these are my personal preferences, so you can tweak these any way you like. Um, now, a few of these are suggested settings that came with the packages. Um, so for example, here we have the theme is set to material theme, and I like the darker theme for that. And the color scheme, like I said, is that pre-dawn theme. And then these are just some additional theme settings that I like to have set here. The uh, graphite color and the compact sidebar. Now for the font face, I use Source Code Pro. And that is available for free on Google Fonts. And I'll leave a link to that in the description section below as well. 
Now I have the font size set really large because I do these videos, but when I'm working on, on personal projects, I usually take that down a bit. Okay, so I'm not gonna go over all of these, but let's see if any of these uh, really pop out to me here. Um, so this skull past the end, I like to have that set to true um, because if that's not set to true, then once you get to the end of a file, then it doesn't let you scroll past it, kind of like over here. With that set to true, it just lets you scroll past and I find that useful. Um, also here I have my translate tabs to spaces set to true and that's just so everything uh, stays consistent even when I use tabs. Now I've got my show definitions and uh, show errors in line set to false because I don't really like things popping up and getting, getting in my way when I'm coding. Now if you want more of an IDE uh, type of feel, then maybe you want those set to true. Okay, so that's a quick look at my Sublime settings. Now you can always go over here to the default settings and look at everything that is available for you. And also they have a lot of good comments here that show you uh, what those options mean. So if you wanna read through there, then you can figure out if you want to you know, change some of these round, around to your own personal preferences. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get uh, moving along and installing some more packages. And some of these we're gonna move through fairly quickly. Um, so I'm gonna close that down. And now I'm gonna open up my com co command palette again. And like I said before, you can click on tools and command palette, or you can use that keyboard shortcut. Now I'm gonna type in install package. Now one package I like is called bracket highlighter. If I type in bracket, we can see it down here, bracket highlighter, I'm gonna install that. And after that finishes installing, it'll pop up a small readme. Now, basically what this does is it helps you keep track of where certain brackets begin and end. Um, so if I have a set of brackets up here that spans multiple lines, then you'll see when I click on the opening or closing brace, it'll show you the other brace over here in the gutter uh, where that begins or ends. And it's extremely useful in languages that use a lot of braces like JavaScript, but I find it useful in Python from time to time too, um, especially uh, since it underlines the other bracket. So you can more easily see if you haven't closed something off properly or not. So now let's go ahead and get rid of those and install another package. Now, another package that I find useful is sidebar enhancements. Now, if I do a secondary click over here in my sidebar without this installed, uh, then you can see that the options are pretty limited. We just have new file, new folder, things like that. So now let's install sidebar enhancements. And once that's finished installing, if I click over here and do a secondary click in my sidebar now, then you'll see that we have a lot more options for searching and opening files and things like that. And I find these new options uh, very useful. Okay, so now let's install a package that's uh, very Python specific. Um, so this adds a lot of Python functionality to Sublime Text. Now this will allow you to set up code linting and auto formatting, uh, the ability to jump to function definitions and things like that. Now this package is called, let me in click install package, and this package is called Anaconda. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that. Now this is different from the Anaconda Python distribution from Continuum Analytics. This is just a Sublime Text pack package with the same name. Uh, so let's install that and I'll show you a few of the specific settings that I use with that Anaconda package. Now, if you're ever unsure if you're uh, installing the correct package or not, then a lot of these have links to the GitHub pages as well. So you can always go to those pa pages to make sure that you're installing what you think you're installing. Okay, so now that we have this installed, let me show you some of the settings that I use specifically with this package. Now I'm gonna pull back up my GitHub page here. And if I go back a page, then you can see that I have Anaconda Sublime settings here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Now there's a lot less personal settings that I have here than my general Sublime settings. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing and copy these. And now we wanna access the Anaconda settings within Sublime Text. Now to get here, we can go to Sublime Preferences, Package Settings, Anaconda, and then within Anaconda, I'll go to Settings. Uh, actually, I'm gonna open up Settings Default and then I'm also going to go to that same place, Preferences, Package Settings, Anaconda, and I'm also gonna open up the Settings User. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and set Sublime Text into split screen mode so that we can see both of these. And on a Mac, that is Command Option 2. And I'm sorry, I'm not sure what that keyboard shortcut is on Windows. Now, just like with our general settings, we don't want to change the default settings. We only want to change our user settings because the default settings can be overridden when we do uh, updates and the user settings will always remain uh, what we put in that file. So we want to make our changes to the user settings. So the user settings are currently blank. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in what I got from the GitHub file and then I'm going to go ahead and save those. Now, just a quick side note, if you want to change settings for any other packages, then uh, the same place that we located the Anaconda settings, that's where you can locate settings for other packages as well. And those are within package settings. But Anaconda are the ones that we're going to change right now. Now, just like my general settings, when I save a lot of changes to the settings, I usually like to restart Sublime Text just to make sure that everything takes effect correctly. I don't think you have to always do that, but I do it just in case. Okay, so we just restarted that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the settings. Now there isn't a whole lot here. Um, basically, I'm saying that I want auto formatting turned on. And what this does is it will auto format your code to be PEP8 compliant if possible. Uh, I like this because it keeps my code consistent. Uh, so for example, if I go here to my test module and I put some extra lines here between the methods and the properties, and then I save this, then you can see as soon as I save it, it formatted back to the proper PEP8 compliant settings there. Okay, so back to the settings. I also have some auto formatting uh, ignores in here. Um, now, I actually don't remember what E309 is, but I do remember that the E501 is for maximum line length allowed. Now, I sh probably should keep my lines uh, shorter when coding, but I go over that limit a lot, and I don't like warnings to pop up all the time. Uh, so if you have any auto formatting or PEP8 warnings that you want to ignore, then you can just put those within the auto format ignore and the PEP8 ignore. Now really, other than that, I just have some linear settings here that are turned off. Now the reason that I have those turned off is because it already marks the errors in the gutter, and that's good enough for me. And also, you know, this is less intrusive with these turned off. Um, so what I mean how, that it marks those in the gutter. So let's say, for example, that I make a for loop here. So I'll just do for num in and then do a list of one, two, three, four. And I'm going to forget to put a colon here. And then I'm just going to print. And instead of printing num, I'm going to print in. So I'm going to have the wrong variable name there. And I'll save that. So you can see with the linting that this Anaconda package provides that it pops up with a ball here in the gutter telling me that something looks wrong. Now, if I click anywhere in this line and look at the bottom left. I'm sorry if this is a little small for your screen. I don't know how to make this uh, larger, but down here it says invalid syntax. Now, after looking at that line for a little bit, then you'll probably notice that the colon is missing. So we'll go ahead and add that in and save it. And now the warning that pops up down here is that we're supposed to have another line in between our class and the rest of the code. So let's go ahead and save that. Now we have one more ball over here in the gutter. And if I click on that line, then it says undefined name in. So then we'll realize that, oh, instead of in, that's supposed to be num. And then when I save that, you can see that the rest of those go away. So it's nice having that linter uh, watching everything in the background because we all make dumb mistakes like that. And it's nice to have something that points those out. Now, the reason that I opened the default settings for Anaconda here um, is just like with the general Sublime settings, um, it's nice to be able to look through all of the options that you have available and also all of the documentation of what each of these options uh, do. So you can read through and know exactly uh, what changes will do what. And like I said, these are just my personal preferences. So I'd recommend you come in and kind of, you know, read around and try some different things for yourself and, you know, set this up how you uh, prefer to have it set up in your Sublime text. Okay, so now that we're done with those settings, I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, uh, non-split screen again. And to do that, I hit uh, Command, Option, and 1 to make this one pane. And now I'm going to go ahead and close down all of the other windows or tabs that we have open here and just have my test module here.
Now, as far as the packages that I install, that's basically it. Now, I also mentioned that I'd go over build systems real quick, and I think that if you're going to be working on multiple projects, then you should become more familiar with how these work. Now, like I said before, uh, this is currently set up as the automatic build system, which runs your script with a default Python on your machine. But if you want to use different versions of Python or virtual environments, then you'll need to set up multiple build systems. Now, I'm not going to go in depth about build systems in this video because I have a video specifically about build systems, and I'll link to that in the description section below. But I will show the quick process of how to set up a basic Python version 2 and Python version 3 build system. Now, I also have these available on my GitHub page as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those up and go back. And you can see that I have a Python uh, Sublime uh, build system for Python 2.7 and one also for Python 3.5. I'm going to open these both up in their own tabs. So you can see these files are very small. And this one has the path to Python 2.7. And this one has the path to Python 3.5. Um, now, like I said, I'm not going to go in depth as to what these build systems do. I have a separate video on that. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this code from this Python 2 build system. And now within Sublime Text, I'm going to go up here to Tools and Build System, and then down here to New Build System. And now within here, I'm just going to paste the code that I grabbed from the, that GitHub page. Now within here, I'll go ahead and save this, and I'm going to save this as python 27sublime build. Now be sure that you leave that sublime build extension on there. You don't want to accidentally remove that. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now this pop-up that I just received here, now these are what you'll get from time to time if you haven't purchased a license for Sublime Text. So like I said, you can use Sublime Text for an unlimited amount of time, but if you don't purchase a license, then you'll get these pop-ups from time to time. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel on that. Okay, so now we just created our Python 2.7 build system. Now let's do the same thing for Python 3.5. So I'm going to open up uh, my uh, GitHub page here and copy those settings for the Python 3.5 build system. Then I'm just going to go through the same process. I'm going to go to Tools, Build System, New Build System, and paste all of that code in there and save that. Now be careful not to overwrite the Sublime build extension. We just want to call this Python 3.5 and save that. So now that we've saved these build systems, then we can go to Tools, Build System, and now we have this Python 2.7 and Python 3.5 build system in here. So if I choose this Python 3.5 build system, and now if I run my code here within Sublime Text, now you could have gone to Tools and Build, but I just used the uh, keyboard shortcut for that. You can see that now when we run our code, now we're running this user local bin Python 3.5, and when we print out the version, it says 3.5, and then it also runs the rest of our code down here at the bottom. Now, like I said, I do have a full video on those build systems, so I would suggest watching that if you need to use Python from a specific virtual environment or anything like that. Um, okay, so that basically does it for how I set up my Python development environment. Now, one more thing, if you do experiment around with different packages and you don't like one that you've installed, then you can easily remove a package uh, by opening up your command palette. So I'm going to do that with Command-Shift-P. And instead of installing a package, if you type remove, then you can see remove package down here as well. And if I click on remove package, it'll show you all the packages that you've installed. And you can remove any of those that you try out and end up not liking. Okay, so I think that's going to do it for this video. Now, this is uh, everything specific to my Python development environment. Now, if you look at the GitHub page that I linked, then you'll see that I also have some personalized keyboard shortcuts in there as well. But I thought that those were, you know, so personal preference that no one would be too interested in those. Uh, but if you'd like to see those shortcuts, then uh, you can view those, um, you know, at the same GitHub page that I have linked. So if you'd like to see some more videos on optimizing Sublime Text, then you can view my playlist on my channel, and I'll put a link to that in the description section below. And if you're doing anything with web development related, then you can watch my older Sublime Text setup video, and I go over some additional packages that are good for, you know, linting HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and things like that. Um, now, I also have a video on how to set up the SUBL command line command in order to open the files and folders and sublime text from your command line. And I find that extremely useful. And you can find those in the playlist that I just mentioned.
So I hope that people found this useful. Uh, one of the most popular questions on the channel is, you know, what editor I'm using and how I set it up to run Python code. Uh, so I hope now everyone gets their set up exactly how they like. Now, I've also had a lot of questions of people asking me for my opinion on Atom, which is another editor that is becoming popular. Now, I do like Atom, and some good things is that, you know, it's completely free, it's made by the people of GitHub, and it has a lot of support. Now, I've also put together a video on setting up a Python development environment within Atom also so that if anyone is interested in using that editor, then they can see how that's done. And I'll put a link to that in the description section below as well. Now, if anyone is wondering if I would recommend Sublime Text or Atom, then I would really just say that it depends. Now, I think Atom is more user-friendly if you're just getting started out. Now, if you don't want to purchase Sublime Text, then I would say that Atom is a good option. But I've been using Sublime Text for so long now that I'm more used to it and find myself always going back to it. So, you know, really the choice is just up to you. Okay, so I think that about does it. Uh, if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer those. Now, if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there's several ways you can do that. Now, the easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also, it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, then you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Uh, be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.